combine everything that is being said together with your, your question. Uh, Kurds have been at a point of extinction for a long time. Both their land and them as a cultural linguistic group. And this has made them question and re-question everything. We've been talking about how it took Earth billions of years to come to a point where humans and their society could exist. So as the site of a third world war where Kurds are fighting for their lives, they are making revolution each and every day because they know that revolutions are not an overnight thing. And they are also questioning what happened that we allowed this 1% to rule us for this long and to allow these billions of years of evolutionary chain to be destroyed over the 5,000 years and more recently and more rapidly in the last 200 years. Sure, we should not, you know, go individualistic on having less showers, but we have to understand how it is that despite we see this situation, we are compliant. And I think this is one of the things that you may have heard of the Kurds with ISIS, you know, the Kurdish woman fighting against the black flag of fascism in the name of not Islam, but Islamic State. So there is more behind this revolution that meets the eye. We want to understand how it is that this colonization process of humanity has allowed all this to be legitimate. How it is that we are not raising hell or rebelling. What are the set of relations that have allowed for this? This is why Abdullah Hocalan and the Freedom Movement goes back to history, connects it with the present to be able to imagine a different life. How do we bring back enchantment to life? Is it really that you are in solidarity with us? Or is it that the 5,000 years has been the colonization of human society by this 1%, beginning with the colonization of women. When we look at it, we see that it's basically at the level ideological narratives and ideological level. We are first told a story. You know, when we look at the Sumerian myths, we see how women slowly lose her goddess characteristics. By the way, we are not looking for a golden past. And we are not dealing with the biology of women, but the set of principles that she put for the social life. And moving from there, we are seeing the tools of colonization has been used on everybody. It's an ideological narrative, use of violence and a lot of it, as well as taking the economy from us. In this metropolitan life, we are more and more turned into wage earners where we, no, we are dependent on the continuation of this system and the wages that we get. So this is why this questioning is just so important. 
so that we do not keep on regenerating these hierarchies or this process of, of ens enslavement in our lives. And this is why there is a huge amount of um, struggle that goes on inside the Kurdish community. To be able to find out who we are and our, what our capacity is. Because what capitalism is trying to do is discourage us. You know, like, I mean, Öcalan is saying that the greatest weapon of capitalism is not in its mass destruction weapons. It is actually in its ability to change our mentality and to legitimize all this. That maybe in the past when people were poor, they rebelled, but today what we do is we hope we win the lottery and we replace those who are living like that. So how did they really destroy our imagination and an, an alternative way of, of life? So what must be done, and this is what in Rojava, Kurdish people, and elsewhere in Bakur, in Mahmur, in Shengal, um, together with Arabs, Armenians, Assyrians, and many different religious beliefs they are trying to do is find this out for themselves. And this is why this project is, or this, this quest is being tried to be killed uh, by different forces like that of Turkey, and its rampant, violent leader, Erdogan. But this presents us that there is a way out. There is a way out of this cycle. So if there is an ideological narrative that we can't do it, we have to show or map out a philosophy and an ideological um, line of how this can be done. If they are using violence, and let me tell you, there is extreme violence used in the margins, but also here, because workers are also colonized. For capitalism to colonize the world, it had to colonize you first, here in Italy. And there were struggles of people against this, and this continues in many ways. So what we are asking is how not do we get a better share as workers, but how do we not become workers? You know. So how do we then defend both ourselves and this defense is not a physical defense only, but in terms of mentality, then how do we then get rid of this positivist scientism which replaces God and does all this that is happening? You know, if science was as great as it says it is, why are we at this point in time? So we have to stop producing for profit, for infinite profit, for infinite development. There is no such thing. How do we bring back philosophy into our lives? How do we bring back the art of good and beautiful living? So it is all these struggles that we sum up, maybe you've heard this, as Jin Jian Azadi, because without Jin, there is no Jin, there is no living. And without this living, this kind of living, there is no Azadi. So I leave you with that, and I leave you with the notion that there must be a struggle first at the level of our 
mindsets to be as a community together again, to be able to set that harmony right with the nature. And without doing that, this 1% is going to rule us as they are at the moment because they bet on us being scared, they bet on us not collaborating, they bet that we will shy back and then just think of ourselves. This is why the Kurdish people own up to those who give their lives for their society. They give their lives because they want a free life. They don't want just any life. They want a free life in harmony with the nature. <laughs>